everyone and welcome to another episode of Rift News, the show you decided to watch just in case there are more oopsies to talk about, to which I have to say, there kind of are. And because I don't want to delay your fishing in Twitch's most recent sensation, work, work. let's get right into the news. Starting with live servers, patch 9.17 dropped, and the Elderwood Ari, Nocturne and Vigar are available for purchase. Remember that Vigar also has an Emerald Chroma, so creators around the internet will start giving them away. Then there are the Infernal skins, which if you don't know are the ones that look really good, and they have a lot of fire all around. But although the Infernal skins were patched in, they are not available yet, because Riot likes to spread the releases throughout the life of a patch, so we can expect them to be released at any moment now. Lastly, for the fans of Teamfight Tactics, you are now able to find Pantheon. Spoiler alert, he's not that good right now. Also, originally Eternals were supposed to be part of this patch, but after the not so pleasant backlash from the community, Riot delayed them to fix some of the many issues people had with them, so don't expect any Eternals yet. That's pretty much it for live servers. So now, let's jump onto PBE. Summer times are ending and so all League veterans were expecting a Star Guardian event. And on PBE, that's what Riot is testing right now. However, as you could learn from the last video, don't expect a PvE event this year. Or maybe even the next year, or the year after that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Riot shared their views on PvE events. Basically, since they are not designed to be permanently available, it eats a lot of their resources to update them every year. And so, Riot decided to just focus their efforts elsewhere. So in short, no PvE game mode. But now you may be asking, well, with no PvE game mode, that's not an event at all. And you're right, Timmy. That's not a real Star Guardian event in my eyes. But Riot will still dish out some new Star Guardian things. So, let's have a look at those. Let's start with the bad things. Yes, Surrenderage 20 found assets for loot. However, there are no orbs to be found. There are only Star Guardian capsules. Which, let's be honest, is exactly the same thing. It just looks different. Also, there is Star Guardian Jackpot, and I'm sorry to be salty about this, but in times when people are getting angry at gambling in video games, why do you call it a jackpot? Anyway, with these out of the way, let's have a look at the real things we get. Earlier last week, Riot revealed their new Star Guardian skins. These skins are for Zaya, Rakan, Zoe and Nico. Now, we will have a look at them in a second, but I quickly need to mention that when people learned who's getting the next Star Guardian skins, they weren't happy. And I understand why. Seeing all the past Star Guardian releases, people expected another team of 1960s anime girls. But not only did we not get 1960s anime girls, the theme was totally changed and we didn't even get a full team. As a result, people got angry that these look more like Dark Star skins, rather than Star Guardians. Which, let's be honest, they do. And they got angry because the champions everyone expected to be Star Guardians didn't get anything this year. We all thought that there would be Star Guardian Sona or Talia, because they would make sense the most. On top of this, Riot swapped the theme because they were likely afraid of releasing yet more skins that would look exactly the same. TB Skyen actually made a really good video on this topic. The visual side of Star Guardians is very limited, and the designers don't have much room to make all the skins stand out. So in the end, if you keep releasing more and more Star Guardians, every champion with a skin from this line would look the same. I mean, if you look at these images, you'll know what's the point. So to avoid dishing out the same thing over and over, Riot needed to change something. And so they gave us the villains of this universe, the corrupted Star Guardians. I know a lot of people want to know my opinion on this new take on Star Guardians. And personally, I don't think that having too many normal Star Guardians is a bad thing. I understand where Riot is coming from, but people who play a champion don't really care about what other champions have for their skins. They only care about the skins their favorite champion gets. So realistically, having too many Star Guardians wouldn't harm anyone. You can already play a full team anyway, so having variety would only help the fantasy if anything. So overall, yeah it's kinda sad that Talia didn't get a Star Guardian skin. Anyway, let's have a look at the new skins now. Probably the best one of them is Star Guardian Zoe. She looks absolutely stellar, all puns intended. In fact, it is so good it is dangerously close to legendary quality. But still, the skin is for 1350 RP. Her companion is this crazy octopus, which might be the best of all companions yet. She also got amazing chroma skins that fit her villainous chaotic side. 
Then we have Rakan and Zaya. Fortunately, these skins are amazing. Unfortunately, both are legendary skins and so they are going to be pricey. They both have unique animations and they use their companions in all of their spells. Also, they got special interactions with all the other Star Guardian skins. From these, we learned that Zoe was the first Star Guardian who got corrupted and she started corrupting others. Originally, Rakan and Zaya were members of Ari's team, but one of their missions failed and the two Star Guardians disappeared and the other Guardians thought they died. This is the story we got from their base skin bios, but we are not sure if we'll even get a new proper story. Just like it was with Pike, even though these are legendaries, they also got their own promo versions. The last Star Guardian this year is Nico. Nico was a member of the original team as well, but when Zaya and Rakan got corrupted and they went on a rampage across the galaxy, Nico managed to stay hidden and she avoided Zoe's corruption. The skin is, well, fine. I'm not a massive fan of Nico anyway, but it's cool to see that Riot decided to give her the suicidal frog as a companion. The skin gives her new spell effects and a recall animation, but although you might expect even more chroma skins, Nico didn't get any, apart from the prestige version which no one is really excited about anymore. And I appreciate this. As you may be aware, Star Guardians are based on specific colors. Ezreal is blue, Soraka is green, Misfortune is red. It's part of their personality and it is something that distinguishes them from the others. So if you suddenly gave the Star Guardians chromas, they would all look identical. That's why Nico is the only Star Guardian who didn't get chromas. She is the only uncorrupted Star Guardian, so visually she's just like the others. While that is it for skins, that's not all this event has to offer. We also got a corrupted icon for this year's theme and a special icon for all the companions and Rakan and Zaya. Next there is a Star Guardian ward and four new emotes. But we are not done yet. Even though we just got three new little legends, Riot will give us even more new little legends. This time it will be three Star Guardian companions. But don't get confused, we only know the middle one. That one is called Shisa and it is Soraka's companion. The others are Fuwa, a piglet that I might try to get, and Dango, a furry blob of something. The only chromas we got revealed were for Dango and it's cool to see that it has a version based on Zoe. Anyway, as always, you'll have to buy eggs and hope for the best to get what you want. The last things that are currently being tested on PBE are the new changes to TFT. These are quite big, so pay attention. First of all, we got brand new base item. But because we got a new base item, we also got 8 new item combinations. So here's what we got. The base item are sparing gloves. It's an item that grants you 10% chance to dodge basic attacks and 10% chance to crit. The cool thing about this is because it has both defensive and offensive stats, depending on what item you combine it with, it will switch to either an offensive or defensive item, doubling either the crit chance or dodge chance. First one is Thieves Gloves. You make this one by combining two sparing gloves. Thieves Gloves are unique because if you give them to a champion, that champion won't be able to carry any other item. The reason for this is because at the start of a round, the champion with Thieves Gloves gains two random items that disappear at the end of the round. The quality of those items depends on the champion's level. So this will be a cool mid to late game item, since you gain more value from it the higher level your champion is. The only issue with this is that the items gained are random and you only really get two items. So don't use this to stack a champion. Next we have Hand of Justice. This is made by combining Sparing Gloves and the Tear of the Goddess. This item randomly gives the champion either 40% increased damage or 40 life on hit. It is a strange RNG item that can be used as a good last resort. Infinity Edge isn't made out of double BF sword anymore. Instead, it is a BF sword and a sparing glove. It makes your crits hit for 200% damage, so nothing new. But this means that double BF sword now makes Lord's Edge. Just like Thieves gloves, when a champion holds Lord's Edge they can't hold anything else. But for every kill they get during a round, they gain one BF sword. So in the end, after 4 kills, the champion can hold triple Lord's Edge. Next we have Arcane Gauntlet, which is a sparing glove and a needlessly large rod. This item gives your spells a chance to critically strike. Then there is Quicksilver, made out of sparing gloves and Negatron Cloak. This item prevents one crown control effect every 5 seconds. But don't worry, Glacials can still easily tear through it. Iceborne Gauntlet, 
which is a combination of sparing gloves and chain vest, creates an attack speed slow zone every time you dodge. Backhand is made out of sparing gloves and giant's belt. This item gives the champion a spell shield, and when the shield is broken, the attacker is stunned, and I quote, for a long time. Then there is repeating crossbow, which is sparing glove and recurve bow. This item is super cool because when the wielder dies, the item jumps onto a different champion, giving them 20% crit and dodge. And this effect stacks with every jump. So if you give it to a champion in the front line, by the time it gets to your carry, they will be super stacked. The last item is mittens, which is sparing gloves and golden spatula. This gives the wearer extra 10% crit and dodge, and it turns them into a yordle. The very last thing in this item update is a new item when you combine BF Sword and a Recurve Bow. Previously you would get Sword of the Divine, but it was so useless they decided to get rid of it. So the new item is Last Whisper. The champion who holds this item won't be able to miss attacks. This ability was previously on Rapid Fire Cannon, but it was moved onto this item instead. Also, Last Whisper deals bonus true damage equal to 5% of the enemy's health. So this item is pretty much just a hard counter to Yordles. They won't be able to dodge and the bonus damage can deal with Nar. Okay, I said that this would be the last thing here, but there is also a bonus item. Sometimes you can also get an item called Nico's Help. When you put this on a champion, you will create a one star copy of that champion and put it on your bench. It's an easy way to clone a legendary or finish a three star champion. Now, on the topic of items, Riot revealed a second TFT update that changes how items drop. Or rather, what drops. Right now, during PvE rounds, you can get gold or items. But Riot is trying to add more rewards to the loot table, so it's not just all I got something awful or I got something awesome. With the new system, you will also be able to get something that is just okay. One of the new rewards is the previously mentioned Nico. The good side of this new addition is that whatever you do with Nico is under your control. So it's not entirely RNG, because your decisions will determine the value of that item. The other new reward is Champions. You can get an orb, I know, how iconic, that contains a champion. It's like a better alternative to gold. Yes, you can sell the champion you get, but if you happen to get Draven on your second round, maybe you should hold on to it instead of selling it for 4 gold. Besides this, Riot is just altering the amount of gold that drops and the number of items you get. All of this is still on PvE, so before it gets to live servers, we can expect the numbers to change a lot. And now, for the last part of this video, let's have a look at Ask Riot. Will there be any rewards for Teamfight Tactics ranked? A very good question that was answered by at Altorfer. Although Riot won't tell us what they are planning yet, at least we learned how they are approaching these rewards. As they said, whatever they give out should have a deeper meaning to competitive players. So they want to avoid generics such as XP or Blue Essence. Not that anyone would actually expect those. They want to give players something they can show off regularly. And that's pretty much all the info we got. So there will be something... that's all we know. Is Teemo still getting a buff or a mini rework? I saw on PBE there were some changes a while ago. This one was answered by Riot Jack. A couple of months ago, Riot tested some changes where Teemo's poison would be his passive, and he would be able to move in stealth even out of bushes. They tried a few variations, but in the end, none of the changes felt like an improvement. They still want to give him some quality of life improvements, but right now, we don't know when that will happen. Are there zip codes in Runeterra? How do citizens receive mail? Is there even mail? A lore question answered by Skethlok. The very concept of worldwide mail is not possible on Runeterra, because you need a single organization to handle it all. Piltover is likely the closest to modern postal service. You have couriers within the city, and sometimes they might even use limited telegraphy. But even that would be expensive. Other regions like Noxus don't have anything close to this. They just give a letter to a runner and they send them away. Sometimes it may take months before they deliver it, but they can deliver it really far. For example, Noxus can easily reach the heart of Shurima. Also, if it is an important delivery, they might want to equip the runner with a proof that they really come from the high seat of Noxus. In short, we were told that if you want to make sure someone gets your message, you should probably deliver it yourself. And the last question, what's the next champion rework after Pantheon? This one was answered by Reeve. Although we know that Volibear and Fiddlesticks are on their way, Fiddlesticks is further ahead so he will come first. 
And that is it for this episode of Rift News. Now get back to fishing. Me busy, leave me alone. Hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other league facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.